Hi, it's Lori from Common Sense Home, and today I'm making up some beet kvass. If you're not familiar with beet kvass, it's a fermented beverage with a beet base, and then to that you, you cover the beets with either salt water mix or a starter culture with salt water, or you can jump start your ferment with a little bit of whey and salt water. And I'm using cutting edge culture. This ferments up to five pounds of vegetables. If you're using a different starter culture, go ahead and read the label and see what amount they recommend for a ferment. And I have my wide mouth quart jar. You're going to want to use a container that you can seal tightly and burp or use an airlock on. And I have my airlock prepped. This has a water seal here so that you're not getting in uh, extra stuff from the air that's more likely to cause mold. I mean, microbes are everywhere. It's perfectly normal in the kitchen to have a fine assortment of them around. And my beets are well scrubbed, but they are not peeled because the lactobacillus bacteria that you want to use and cultivate in the ferment are actually present in larger numbers on the skin of the beets. So clean them good, but you don't need to peel them. And then, you know, cut them into chunks. And a quart, you need about three large beets or an assortment of smaller beets. And once I've got my beets in the jar, I'm gonna have my water. And to that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of natural salt. This is Himalayan pink salt. You can use real salt. You don't want to use iodized salt because that will do funky things with your ferment. And you don't want something like canning or picnic salt either. Just a nice unprocessed salt. And I also added in my starter culture, as I mentioned earlier. And that will just give you a jump start to the ferment. Because you're looking to preserve your vegetables by lowering the pH and you want to cultivate those healthy bacteria that <clears throat> duplicate, replicate, grow like crazy in that acidic environment. And this is generally consumed once you've got the salt and the starter blended with your water. Oh, mention moment of the water. <laughs> um, about the water, you don't want to use chlorinated water and you can use RO water or other filtered water. If you've got chlorinated water, that can interfere with the fermentation. And I'm gonna pour that right over the top of our beets. And that is all there is to the prep. You don't need to stir this or anything while it's fermenting. Just get your airlock sealed on and like I said, you can either use an airlock or you can burp this daily to make sure that those gases are able to escape so you don't blow your lid off and do awful messy things in your kitchen. And I'm gonna leave this to ferment on my kitchen counter for about five to seven days. It's chilly, it's winter time here, so it's probably gonna go the whole week. After it's done fermenting, then we move to the fridge for further storage. So back in about a week and we'll check up and see how it's doing. Here we are a week later and I have my strainer out and my jar to pour the finished kvass into. And I'm gonna open this up and um, there are active bubbles here and the um, fermenting liquid now has a mild beet flavor with a little bit of saltiness and a little bit of sourness to that. And so I'm gonna go right ahead and Pour that into the strainer here and depending on how warm your kitchen is, the ferment can be done as quickly as say two to three days or as long as five to seven days. And you're going to want to taste test along the process and watch the, bur the bubbling and see how it ferments and, uh, and then decide when you want to use it. You're kind of looking for that similar to sauerkraut flavor profile, but of course with the sweetness of the beets. And then I'm gonna bottle this 
And you can either drink this right away or you can store it in the refrigerator for up to a month. And then I'll go ahead and strain out this other jar here and put them together. And remember, if you're storing a refrigerator, always date and label. And you can also mix this up if you want to combine your beets with carrots or you want to uh, add in some spices like a little bit of ginger root or cinnamon. There's some different modifications and I'll have those covered in the article with a printable recipe. And that is really it. As for mints go, this is really super simple. You don't need a really specific temperature range. It's easy to do and something different to add in and mix in some different probiotics, which is really important, especially heading into cold and flu season. And that is that. Be kvass.